Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening. Yes, teacher. Hi. Good to see you again. Hope you had a great weekend. It's a little cold tonight, don't you think? It feels cold in my house. A little bit cold. Okay. Um, I'm going to start. Just give me a second as I share the presentation with you. Okay. There's a presentation. Okay, and as usual, I'm going to go through the attendance list before we do anything else. So when you hear your name, please let me know. <clears throat> Avdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Avdi Avisua Peña Lopez. I'm here. Thank you. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher, good evening. Welcome. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher, present. Good evening. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher, good Welcome. evening. Welcome, good evening. Boris Martin Salinas Quintanilla. Here, teacher. Welcome. Hi. Cecilia Hi. Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Present teacher. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. José Eraibín Enríquez. José Eraibín Enríquez. Carla Stephanie Perla Humansor. Carla Stephanie Perla Humansor. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Present teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Welcome. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Good evening, present. Welcome. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hello. Hello. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Good evening, teacher. Present. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Welcome. Sandra Cecilia Munguia. Present. Welcome. We have three chat entries. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado says present. Okay, thank you. Madeline Dayana also, thank you. And Gladys Imelda. Okay, 
Thank you very much. And Janira Mendoza also. Yes, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Everybody. Good evening, teacher. I'm Hi. Here. Jenny Santiana. Jenny's. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's begin. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 3, and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service once again. This is session 13, and today is November the 20th of 2023. So we're going to begin. We have already completed sections 1, 2. We have completed the, uh, the midterm, okay? Also, we have completed section 3, and right now it's time for us to go through section number 4, and we're going to finish with the final test, okay? Okay. Um, I hope everybody has worked on the platform. Okay, <laughs> I really hope so. Uh, but anyway, um, we're going to go through the contents of section number four. Let's start. So we have the starting point, okay? The benefits of studying abroad, okay? So to begin with, what is, if you know the answer, please let me know. What is the meaning of abroad? When people say that something happens abroad, what do they mean? What is that? If anybody knows, please raise your hand and uh, you're welcome to participate. What is abroad? Mm -hmm. Boris. Well, uh, for me, uh, abroad means that uh, when people uh, travel to other country. Mm -hmm. That's right. Abroad means in a different country. That's the meaning of that. So in a country other than the Salvador. That's it. So yeah, Boris, that is correct. So the benefits of studying abroad. Studying abroad. That's that's. There are there are some benefits to studying abroad. So read this website. Choose three benefits of studying a language abroad that you feel are the most important. So that's the first part. You have opening doors to the world. Study abroad with Language Travelers Institute. Okay. So <clears throat> there is the. LTI schools, study abroad and contact us. These are like some of the uh, links <laughs> that you can click on on this website. But I want you to take a good look at this, right? There is opening doors to the word studying abroad with Language uh, Travelers Institute. Let me just fix something because I don't think the image looks okay. Just uh, let me fix that. I'm going to increase the sharp the sharpness of it by 30%. Okay, now it looks a little bit better. Okay, so um, we have this, right? Consider enrolling. Enrolling means registering, becoming a member, becoming a student. That's the meaning of enrolling. So consider enrolling in one of LTI's affordable programs of language study abroad. Then imagine yourself by the end of next year. So what is LTI? LTI means Language Travelers Institute. Okay, so it's, it's the name of the institution. It's the name of the school. So you have three uh, benefits, okay? Um, three things that uh, you will have been doing by the end of next year. So I need a volunteer to help me read the first three, please. Just a volunteer to read. We have two chat entries here. Maritza and Cesar are here. Okay, welcome Maritza and Cesar. I'm taking your attendance right now. Maritza and also Cesar. Thank you. All right. So, um, as I was saying, can I have a volunteer to read the first three points? The first three pieces of information in the bullet points. Maritza Isabel, thank you very much. And then Gladys, also, you're going to help us. The first. Please. Consider enrolling in one of LTI's affordable programs of language study abroad. Then imagine yourself by the end of next year. You will have been studying your student language for 12 months. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, you, you read the 
the introduction to it and also the first one. You will have been studying your chosen language for 12 months. Okay, so studying a language could be English or a different language, okay, for 12 months. So that's the first one right there. Thank you, Maritza. Gladys also wanted to read. Okay, Gladys, can you help me read the, the second one and the third one, please? Thank you, yeah. Maritza. You will have been interacting with people from other cultures, which will have changed the way you view the world. Mm -hmm. And the third one, too. You will, have been you will have been living in a fascinating foreign land. Yeah. So you will have been interacting with people from other cultures, which will have changed the way you view the world and you will have been living in a fascinated foreign land okay that's that's another one okay so uh rosa rosa wanted to to read or did you have a question rosa mm -hmm. um and if you you your light over um night 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 90 uh, 90 percent okay so new. and if you are like over 90 percent of lti's former students by this time next year okay can you read the first one rosa please uh you have confident we had Increased. 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 Okay, your self-confidence will have increased. Thank you, Rosa. So that's the first one. Your self-confidence will have increased. That's a benefit for you. We have another chat entry here. Debbie Segura. Okay, thank you, Debbie Segura. Okay, all right. Uh, the next two, please. I need a volunteer to help me read them. Jenny, thank you. Your commitment, 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 to commitment uh, to language, to language study will have gotten stronger, mm -hmm. stronger. Uh, you will have made many fascinating new friends. Yeah, your commitment to language will have gotten stronger and you will have made many fascinating new friends. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Okay, Rosa and Jenny, uh, for uh, helping me read this. And uh, so, uh, before we continue, before we proceed to the next part, this is just the introduction to the general grammar topic. Do you have any questions about the vocabulary presented in this website here? Sorry, I'm a little tired. <laughs> okay, it's Monday. So, uh, does anybody have questions about the vocabulary? Jenny. What's me? Commitment. Commitment. Okay. So, commitment. what is what is commitment? Okay. For example, um, are you married, Jenny? No. 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 You're 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 okay. You're single. All right. Yeah. Okay, well, commitment can be can be shown in, in many different ways. For example, imagine that a man gives a woman an engagement ring and he asks the lady, hey, would you marry me? And the lady says, yes, of course I will marry you. So, okay, so the man gives the lady a ring. They are engaged. That is a form of commitment, okay? That means, uh-huh, uh -huh, it's a form of commitment. Yeah. But commitment can come in many different forms. For example, if you uh, have a class, an English class, every night at 8 p.m., and every night you are here from the beginning until the end, that is also commitment. Yes. Okay? okay? You are I a committed understand. person. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> You're welcome. So your commitment to language will have gotten stronger. Okay? Commitment in Spanish is compromiso. Okay? That's the meaning of it. Uh, does anyone else have a question? Any other questions from the reading? Teacher, teacher yes. please. Affordable. Affordable. Okay. Affordable it means that you can pay it. 
that you have the means, you know, the money to pay for it. So when, when they tell you consider enrolling in one of LTI's affordable programs for lang of language study abroad, that means that they are not very expensive. I mean, you can pay them, okay? That's the meaning of affordable. Maybe they are not cheap, but at least they are not ridiculously expensive. People can pay them. That's the meaning of that. Affordable. L T L T I. L T I is uh, Language Traveler Institute. Ah, okay. Thank mm -hmm. you, teacher. You're welcome. Any other questions about the vocabulary? No questions. I don't know. I don't know if you already told us about the meaning of abroad. Abroad. It means in a different country. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you study Thank abroad, you. that means you go to study to the United States, to Canada, England, or any other country. You know, some people go study in, in, in Mexico and in Argentina, Chile. Some people go to China, Taiwan, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Japan even. Rufino. In, in the last world, um, your oyster, oyster? What do you mean oyster? Study abroad with uh, Language Travelers Institute and the world will become your oyster. An oyster is an animal, basically. Okay. So um, I believe uh, when, when when they say in this case, the world will become your oyster, is you don't have to take it so literal. It's more like uh, the, the world will become yours. Okay. It, 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 it gets smaller. Okay. Because you get more knowledge. I believe that's what they mean by that because oyster is actually an animal, but this seems to me like it's some sort of idiomatic expression that unfortunately I'm not really that familiar with. Okay, but I guess that's the meaning of that. Uh, Byron? Increase it, what is? Increase becomes more. The opposite is decrease, less. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Increase, you're welcome. Okay, so, um, all right then, we'll continue. Okay, so um, I have a question. Has anybody studied abroad before? I haven't, okay? So I don't have this experience, but maybe one of you has. Has, has anybody had the opportunity to study abroad? Nobody? Okay, probably not. Okay, I know uh, several people who have studied abroad, and but most people nowadays they choose to study online. Okay, in a way, it's more convenient because you don't have to move to another country, right? But at the same time, I think it takes away the excitement of you know traveling to a new place. Okay, but in the end, um, everybody's different, and 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 you choose whatever is most convenient uh, for you. So if, if, if I had to be honest, I will prefer to study online, okay? But in my case, it's um, I'm married and, and, and I'm also a parent. So I, I don't like the idea of moving to a different country. So if I had the opportunity, I would choose to study online. But maybe uh, if you are single, okay? And uh, you don't have a, a very strong commitment to anyone in this country, man, then maybe studying abroad is a good idea. Okay, it all depends on what you want. So, well, let's continue. Words of encouragement. Okay, if we're going to do this, complete these phrasal verbs with a preposition from the box. Again, I'm going to increase the sharpness of this because I don't like how, what it looks like. Just going to increase it by 30%. That looks better. Okay, so words of encouragement, complete these phrasal verbs with a preposition from the box. And the prepositions from the box are about uh in of to and with okay so just for it to look a little bit better i'm going to insert the box in here and i'm going to eliminate the fill okay there it is about into about in of to and with so the first one is adjust to adjust to that's the first one adjust to 
What about number two? Who can tell me? What preposition from the box can you um, can you use to complete this this expression? I need a volunteer, please. If you know the answer, raise your hand. Always remember to raise your hand first. Do you say be excited about? Do you say be excited in? Be excited of? Be excited to? Or be excited with? Which preposition goes with excited? Noemi Alicia. But excited with. Be excited with. With. Actually, no, sorry. No. It's a different one, but you get a second opportunity. Uh, excited to excited to no sorry it's not excited to but thank you for your participation okay let's see uh i'm sorry uh debbie excited, um, be excited about okay all right be excited about that is correct thank you very much Okay, always let's remember if you want to participate, raise your hand first and wait for, for the instructor to uh, give you a chance to speak. All right, but yeah, thank you, Debbie. Be excited about, okay, that is correct. Um, <clears throat> by the way, let's just go through each of them, adjust to, okay, when you adjust to a situation, right? Uh, like when you go to a different country, for example, you have to adjust to a new situation. You have to adjust yourself to a new culture. You have to adjust to new customs and traditions. You have to adjust to even a different uh, time zone, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the meaning of adjust, basically, when things are different, but you change to accommodate yourself into this new situation. That's the meaning of adjust. Then you have be excited about, which is self-explanatory. But yeah, when you feel like the excitement about something that's coming or something that you're really looking forward to doing. So um, thank you very much. Jose Eraibin, uh, what about number three? Be scared of. Be scared of, that is correct. Yeah, that's right. Be scared of, you know, something that, uh, I don't know, <laughs> makes you feel fear or or makes you nervous for some reason. Okay, you're scared of that. Okay. Uh, Rosa. Okay, Rosa, number four. Be familiar with. Be familiar with. That is correct. Okay, when you are familiar with something, that means that you know that. You know that something. Be familiar with. Very good. I believe Gladys wanted to participate. I saw her raising her hand. Do you still want to participate, Gladys? Yeah, become aware in. Become become aware in. No, sorry, it's not mm -hmm. in, but you get a second opportunity. Become mm -hmm. aware to. Become aware to. Uh, sorry, but no, it's not two either. Okay, but thank you for <laughs> participating. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's see what uh, Debbie says, then Maritza, and then Boris. Become aware of. Become aware of. Okay, when you become aware, thank you, that is correct. When you become aware of something, that means that you learn about something. But it's not like learn something that you learn at university or at school. It's more like a situation. You know, there's a situation that you didn't know about and somebody tells you and you say, I didn't know that. Okay, for example, if somebody tells you like, hey, you know that every night some men, you know, that don't live here are seen wandering and, and taking pictures of the house, the houses, I'm sorry. And you say, oh my God, I didn't know that. So that's the moment when you become aware of something. Okay, the moment you receive a new piece of information and you go like, oh, okay you become aware. Something that was happening, but you didn't know about. Okay, and now you do. So you become aware of something. Maritza, the next one, please. Get accustomed. Get accustomed to. 
correct. When you get accustomed to, is like you get used to something. Okay, it's the meaning of get accustomed to something or get accustomed to doing something. Also, uh, you get used to it. Thank you very much, uh, Rosa. Esmer wait, wait a second, but before Rosa, I believe Boris wanted to participate. Do you still want to participate, Boris? <laughs> yes, teacher. Okay, what about look forward? Look forward. Look forward in. Look forward in. No, sorry, it's a different one, but you get okay. a second opportunity. <clears throat> look forward to. That is correct. Look forward to. And what is the meaning of look forward to? It's when you feel excited about something that's coming, something in the future. For example, imagine that you've been studying really hard and your graduation will be soon. Okay, you can say, I am looking forward to my graduation. That means I want my graduation to come, right? I want it to happen. I am excited about it. Okay, or you can say, for example, that uh, your birthday is going to be soon. Okay, and you always have a really good time during your birthday. So you can say, I'm looking forward to my birthday. Okay, uh, I want it to happen. That's the meaning of it. Or you want to travel abroad, okay? And you say like, okay, next month it's vacation. Well, it's December, right? So I always, for example, visit uh, my relatives in Canada to give you an idea. So you have a trip. You're looking forward to that. That means that you feel excited about that. You want it to happen, okay? That's the meaning of look forward to. Um, you can, by the way, in, in a formal emails and letters you can end the uh, you know the email by saying uh wait i'm looking forward to okay you can say that i'm looking forward you can say for example i'm looking forward to uh your reply that's how you finish an email you know a formal email i'm looking forward to your reply or I'm looking forward to, because to is a preposition, you have to use the ing form after that. Hearing from you, okay? Okay, you can say that. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'm looking forward to your reply, okay? Et cetera, et cetera. So this is a very nice and also very formal way uh, to finish or to end an email or a letter, okay, if you're writing one. Look forward to. The next one, what about number eight? Rosa, Rosa wanted to participate, right? Nine more? The, um, no, no, that's number um, nine. What about number eight, participate? Uh, participate two. Participate two. No, sorry, it's not participate two, but you get a second opportunity. Okay. Similar to Spanish, actually. Okay, so which one is it? Um, maybe Debbie can help us. Uh, is in participate, participate in. in. That's right. You participate in an activity. Okay. Not much to explain right there. Okay, it's pretty much the same as it is in Spanish. So you participate in an activity. Okay, or like a class right now, you're participating in the class. Thank you, um, Rosa and Debbie. What about number nine, take advantage? How about take advantage? What preposition do you normally use with that? Byron. Take advantage about? Take advantage about. Sorry, but it's not about, but you get a second opportunity. Take advantage of, maybe? That is correct. Yeah, you take advantage of something. Okay, that's right. Very good. Now you have uh, this vocabulary. It's very useful. Okay, I recommend you study it. Again, remember the words are, or the terms are, adjust to, be excited about, be scared of, be familiar with, become aware of, get accustomed to, look forward to, participate in, take advantage <laughs> of. Uh, Janira. Please uh, share us uh, 
this chair, this uh, sure. screen no in problem. WhatsApp, please. No problem. <clears throat> Okay, it's right there. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so what are we going to do? This is lesson objective 4.0. By the end of this section, participants will be able to practice or will practice, okay, using future perfect and future perfect continues. Okay. Um, what is this? Okay, future perfect and future perfect continues. This appeared in the first part of the class. If you remember, it's right here. This, studying, uh, open, opening doors to the word, okay? You find both structures in this text. So that's exactly what we're going to study right now. So use the future perfect. Now, what is future perfect? It's the structure that you use to emphasize that something will be completed or achieved by a particular point in the future. Okay, so you say, by this time next year, your self-confidence will have increased. And what is the structure that you use for future continuous? It's actually pretty simple. Basically, it's right here, future continuous. No, sorry, future, future perfect, I'm sorry. Future perfect, the other one's future perfect continuous. So future perfect goes like this. The structure is pretty much will, the model will plus verb in base form plus, wait a sec, no, 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 stop. Sorry, I'm making a mistake here. It's will have, I'm sorry. And then, sorry about that. Verb in past participle. Okay, that's future perfect. You have to say will have and then the verb in past participle, like the example right here. You say, by this time next year, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Your self-confidence will have increased. You have it right there. By this time next year, your self-confidence will have increased. So what is future perfect is the use of will and have. Always will have. Never will has because that doesn't exist. After a model, you don't use uh, any other form that is not the base form. You always use the base form of the verb. So you use will have plus the main verb in past participle. Okay, so by this time next year, your self-confidence will have increased. So what is next time next year? Okay, uh, today is... November the 20th, okay, of uh, 2023. So when they say by this time next year, they mean November the 20th of 2024. So what is that? Take a look. You use the future perfect to emphasize that something will be completed or achieved by a particular point in the future. So November 20th of 2024 is the future. It's not the present, right? It's one year this time next year. So that's a specific moment in the future. If you want to specify that an activity will be completed before that moment in the future, then you will have to use future perfect. Okay, so that's the idea. Always remember, future perfect emphasizes an activity that is completed, that is finished before a specific moment in the future, like this. When you say by this time next year, that means November 20th of 2024, that's a specific moment in the future, your self-confidence will have increased. Su confianza en sí mismo se habrá incrementado, right? So your self-confidence will have increased. All right? That's the thing. Now, you use the future perfect continuous, that's a little bit different, to emphasize the duration of an activity in progress at a particular point in the future, okay? So, what is the meaning of this? It's a similar concept, 
but the difference is that the activity will not be completed. The activity will still be in progress in that moment, in a specific moment in the future. And what is the structure for future perfect continuous? Future perfect continuous goes like this. Let me show you. I think I'm going to just do this. Okay. So you have future perfect continuous. You have it here. The structure is pretty much will have been. Always those three words. Will have been plus the verb in ing form. OK? And you have this example. By the end of next year, you will have been studying your chosen language for 12 months. So. You will have been studying your chosen language for 12 months. OK. So again, it's here. Will have been studying. You have it here, right? This, the structure is will have been, and then the verb in ing will have been studying your chosen language for 12 months. Now, again, uh, the two forms are related in the fact that they both refer to a specific moment in time in the future. But future perfect refers to activities that will be completed before that moment. And future perfect continuous refers to activities that will still be in progress in that moment in the future. In other words, they will not be finished. They will be in progress in that moment in the future. That's how it works. So um, I know that you have been working on this, uh, by the way, in the platform. But uh, if you have any questions right now, I'll be happy to answer them. No questions? Then we we'll do an exercise. 8.38. Yeah, we still have some time. OK, so just remember the structure, right, which is future perfect is will have always will have and after that a verb in past participle and future perfect continuous is will have been always will have been and then a verb in ing the main verb in ing that's how you do it so we're going to do this exercise which is by the way knowledge check 4.2 these sentences about june's year abroad have all mistakes they all have mistakes correct the mistakes using the future with will the future perfect or the future perfect continuous. Remember that the future with will is just will and the verb in base form, always like that. Then compare answers with a partner. So the first one is by this time tomorrow, that's a specific moment in the future, June will travel for 24 hours. Now there's something that doesn't really add up right there. So a better way to explain this or a better way to phrase this will be by this time tomorrow, June will have been traveling for 24 hours. That means that he will still be traveling. OK, maybe poor June will be tired, but yeah, he will still be traveling. OK, his journey will not be complete. So again, by this time tomorrow, June will have been traveling for 24 hours. What about exercise well, it's the same exercise, but item number two in exercise B. By the end of next week, they will have been installing his phone. Then we can call him. What about this one right here? I'm going to prepare the space for the answers. What will be the correct form? If you have the answer or if you want to participate, please raise your hand. Byron, thank you very much will have installed his phone. Yes, by the end of next week, they will have installed his phone. In other words, we're talking about a completed action before a specific moment in the past, in the future, I'm sorry. When they say by the end of next week, that's a specific moment in the future. You say they will have installed his phone. That means 
the action will be complete before that moment. Thank you, Byron. What about number three? He'll be going out more after a few weeks because he will have been he will have been more familiar with the city. Even reading this is kind of difficult because it's so convoluted. I mean, it's wrong. So, <laughs> so um, how about number three? Who wants to give it a try? I know you have done this in the platform, so it's pretty much the same. I believe there's only one that is different that like kind of the answer in the platform is not quite right, but the rest are, are the same, I guess. Let me check. No, they're all the same. So um, about number three, who wants to who wants to try? Number three, come on, don't be shy. Cecilia, thank you very much. Okay, is he'll be going out more after a few weeks because he will be more familiar with the city. That is correct. He'll be going out more after a few weeks because he will be more familiar with the city. Okay, he will be. Very good. It's just will and the verb. Thank you very much, Cecilia. That is the correct answer. What about number four? After studying English for a few months, he will have felt more confident about speaking to people. Cesar. After studying English for a few months, he will feel more confident about speaking to people. Correct. After studying English for a few months, he will feel, okay, prediction, more confident about speaking to people. And that's a that's a common prediction. So you use will plus the verb. Only that. Thank you, Caesar. That is good. Um, what about number five? Okay, need a volunteer. By this time next year, he probably will not have been writing as many letters, but we will have continued to write to him anyway. So uh, there are two changes you need to make here. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle, please. By this time next year, he probably will not have been writing. He will not, I'm sorry, he, he will not have. He will not have been mm, writing. Not exactly, it's a bit different. Uh -huh. Writing, use many letters, but we will, will have continued to write to him anyway. Um, well, thanks for participating, but uh, not really. Okay, it's 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 a bit different. It's a bit different. M maybe uh, Maritza can help us, and Nana Filomena. Um, by this time mm -hmm. next year, he probably will not have written mm -hmm. as many letters, but we. We will have continue to write to him anyway. Okay, the first one is correct, but the second one needs some changes. <laughs> but thank you, yeah, thank you. Okay, so okay. the first part is right. Okay, by this time next year, he probably will not have written us many letters, but we, this is the part that we need to, to fix. But, but we will continue. Yeah, totally. But we will continue to write to him anyway, okay? That is right. Thank you, Maritza. Very good. About number six. Let me turn on the fan, okay? I, just a moment ago, I said it was cold and it's become a little bit warm. Okay, it's better. Uh, about number six. Uh, I'm sure he will change a lot by the time he comes back to Korea. How about this one? You know the answer, please raise your hand. Say it, Ibing. You, you're I'm being sure. quiet today. <laughs> okay. It's because this time is kind of difficult for me. It's Monday. Well, I've uh, actually I've tried to to answer the the exam 
by Ah. myself, but uh, I just uh, uh, I just did three. Uh, solo me salieron tres buenas. I don't know how to say it. I only got three correct answers. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sure he will have changed a lot by this time. By the time he comes, he comes back at, to Korea. Okay, he will have changed, right? That's right. Yeah. I'm sure he will have changed a lot by the time he comes back to Korea. Thank you, Jose. Thank you very much. Good. Number seven. His family will have been surprised when he gets back because he will have been changing so much. Wow. Okay. Uh, what's the correct version of this sentence? Sorry if I cover my mouth often, but I, I, I had dinner before this, so it's when you're talking, you know, you burp a little bit. Okay, so um, about number seven, his family will have been surprised. Okay, Jose wants to give it a second, uh, second go. Uh, his family will be surprised when he gets gets back because he will have changed so much. That is correct. His family will be surprised when he gets back because he will have changed so much. That is right. Very good. Thank you. And number eight, and just think, the next time we see him, he will turn 22 already and he will be away for a year. About the last one. How about the last one? Who wants to give it a try? Okay, Jose. All right, Jose is on fire now. Okay, and just think the next time we see him, he will have turned 22 already. And he will will have been away for a year. That's correct. And just think, the next time we see him, he will have turned twenty two already. Twenty two already, and we will have he will have been away for a year. Okay, that is right. Thank you very much. Those are the right answers. Cool. Okay, so um. There are a few exercises, which is the grammar extra that we need to do. And it's here. Now, future perfect and future perfect continuous. This information is not in the platform or the manual. So I'm just gonna have to send it to you via WhatsApp right now. So right there. Okay. Now, some extra information about the future perfect and future perfect continuous for us to understand better how it is used. When using the future perfect or future perfect continuous, the particular point in the future is often referred to in another part of the sentence. Okay. Now, how do you express this? There are many different ways in which, well, not many, but there are several different ways in which you can express or you can refer to a specific moment in the future. For example, in the first sentence you have, by this time next year. So when you say by this time next year, that means November the 20th of 2024, okay? That's a specific moment in the future. By this time next year, your commitment to language study is going to have gotten stronger or will have gotten stronger. You can say on August 1st, okay, right now we're in November, but if we consider it's August 1st next year, okay, that's the future. On August 1st, I will have been living overseas for six months. Overseas, means it's like abroad, but usually in a different continent, even. That's the meaning of that. So uh, again, on August the 1st, say August the 1st of next year, 2024, I will have been living overseas for six months. How about the next one? You can say after a few months, okay? When you say after a few months, that's also a specific moment in the future, okay? So if you say right now after a few months, that could be like in March next year. That's a few months in the future, okay? That's like five months, 
less than five months in the future, four and a half months in the future. So after a few months, you are going to have been making real progress with English, okay? Before next spring. Well, in Salvador, we only have summer and winter, but well, in other countries they have spring and spring is, it's, I believe, uh, it's going to be next year, okay? So before next spring, he will have finished most of his coursework, okay? So again, when you say before next spring, that's a specific moment in the future. Now, next sentence. Marisa's flight will have left soon, okay? Just a word like soon also expresses a moment in the future. So it can be used with present, per, present uh, future perfect, I'm sorry, and future perfect continuous. Uh, the next one, when the van arrives, it's a type of car, right? So when the van arrives, not right now, it's also in the future. So when the van arrives, I will have been packing for two days and I probably won't have finished. Before I leave for Paris, okay? This is also in the future. Imagine that you have a, you have a trip to Paris and the trip to Paris is going to be in January, okay? But right now we're in November, so before I leave to for Paris, okay, that means probably one week before that or two days before that. So still, it's a specific moment in the future. So before I leave for Paris, I will already have sold my house and put my things in storage, okay? And the last one, after I finish this, that means that you are still doing it. So when you finish, that's in the future. So after I finish this, I will have completed everything on my to-do list. So again, what is the information in here? When using the future perfect or the future perfect continuous, the particular point in the future is often referred to in another part of the sentence, okay? So it, it comes in many different forms, okay? You just have to make sure that uh, you can identify those say markers that determine that we're talking about a specific moment in the future. That's the important thing, okay? Um, and for that, we're going to do an exercise because that's 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 the idea. I want you to, to show me that you can identify those. The exercise is right here. So it goes like this, underline, but in your case, you can't underline, you just need to identify them. Underline the words that refer to a point in the future. So I'm going to send this to you via WhatsApp and I'm going to give you about three minutes for you to uh, identify those expressions in the sentence. Wait, right here. Okay, you have a via WhatsApp and it's also showing on the screen. So, <clears throat> so what are you going to do? Identify, underline, identify, right? The words that refer to point in the future. There's an example. Number one, by the spring, okay, we are not in spring, okay? Actually, right now in the United States is, is autumn, it's fall, and then comes winter, and then comes spring. So that's the future. So by the spring, Nate will have visited over a dozen, a dozen sorry, different countries, okay? dozen different countries. So uh, by the spring is the expression about the future. It, it refers to a specific moment in the future. Okay, maybe not that specific, but it's a moment in the future anyway. So I'm going to give you three minutes. I want you to take a look at those sentences and identify each and every expression that refers to a moment in the future. So three minutes beginning right now. Let's do this. Then we're going to check answers.
One minute. Teacher, I have a question. Sorry, I was looking away. Yes, Jose. We just have to underline the specific time in the in the sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, thank you. Only the expression that shows you that you're referring to a moment in the future. And I okay, believe thank it's you. Time. Yeah, it's time. Okay, time up. All right, so what about number two? When the end of the week arrives, I will have written four exams. Who wants to try? Biden. Okay, is when the end of the week arrives. That is correct, when the end of the week arrives. Very good, thank you. What about number three? Pretty soon I will have been working on this puzzle for an hour. It's impossible. Boris Salinas. Yeah, pretty soon. Pretty soon. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Thank you. Number four. I can't believe he's still sleeping. At 11, he'll have been sleeping for 12 hours. How about number four? <clears throat> what is that? Jose. At 11? At 11. Yeah, that's correct. That's good. It's at 11. Good. Great. So what about number five? When she leaves for the restaurant, she'll have changed her outfit six times. If you want to participate, please raise your hand and try to participate, please, because it's always the same people. Always the same people, right? Try to say something. Please. Boris Salinas, and then Cecilia Elizabeth. When she leaves, teacher. When she leaves. Only that? Mm. No, when she leaves for the restaurant. When she leaves for the restaurant. That's correct. Okay, that's the expression. Thank you. Okay, uh, Cecilia, number six. If it continues on Tuesday, it will have been raining for three weeks. Um, if it continues, if it continues, not exactly. It's a different one. You get a second opportunity. Um, it will have been raining for three weeks. That that will be the main clause. It will have been raining. That will be the main clause in present perfect. I'm sorry, future perfect continuous. Mm. So only one, only one option left. Teacher, maybe you have to to repeat the instruction because I noticed that she didn't understand you. Oh. Well, it's just um, it's just uh, that we need to identify, you know, the part of the sentence that indicates that we are referring to a moment in the future. So on this sentence, number six, what word or words indicate that we're talking about a specific moment in the future? Maybe Jenny can help us. I think it's on Tuesday. It's on Tuesday. That is correct. Okay. On Tuesday, because that's the future. It's tomorrow. Okay. On Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, number seven. Also, thank you, Cecilia. Number seven. After I finish this, I will have painted three of the rooms in my house. How about this one? Maritza Isabel. And then Debbie Segura. After a finish? Only that? 
After I finish this. After I finish this, all that, right? So after I finish this, good. Thank you very much. And Debbie, number eight, even before the plane lands, we will have been in the air for seven hours. Um, I think it's even before the plane lands. That's right, even before the plane lands. Great, thank you, thank you. So uh, it's good that, well, we are identifying the expressions that refer to a specific moment in the future. I believe we have just run out of time. Yeah, it's already 92. So I'm just going to go through the uh, attendance list one more time very quickly and check that everybody's still here. <clears throat> Let's see, Abdi Aviso Peña Lopez is here. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla is here. Ana Filomena Mendoza is here. Ana Yanira is also here. Yes, Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva is not. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino is here. Boris Martin, Salinas Quintanilla is here. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado. Yes, Cesar Alexander Ramirez is here. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez is not online tonight. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos is here. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia is here. Gabriela Loure, Sequeira Bernal. Yes, you're here. Uh, Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez yes, is you. also here. Um, Gladys Imelda Sanchez is here. Jenny Elizabeth Santiana Cortez is here. Jose Ivan Enriquez is also here. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor is here. Luis Fernando Enriquez Herrera is here. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Madeline was here a moment ago. Okay. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre is here. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva is here. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle, yes. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura is here. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores is also here. Rufi Noamilcar Hernández Linares, yes. And Sandra Cecilia Munguía is also here. Everybody, thank you for your uh, participation and thank you for, you know, joining us tonight. Please uh, keep studying this and I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Okay, 8 p.m. Good night. Bye, teacher. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye. Take Good care. Night. Good night.